In the spring of 2000, Nebraska farmers planted 72% of their soybeans to a herbicide tolerant variety. By 2002, that share jumped to 85%. The tops were met in both 2008 and 2011 when 97% of Nebraska's soybeans were a herbicide tolerant variety. While that technology has given producers new options in weed control, one could argue it's also played a role in fueling weed resistance. In this state, there are currently eight herbicide-resistant weed species. Five of those have resistance to glyphosate. At a recent Nebraska Soybean Board-sponsored field day, we spoke with Stephen Knezevic about the new challenges farmers face in handling weeds, specifically those that have rapidly developed glyphosate resistance. Around the pretty technology, uh, was beginning to take off like a 96, 7, 8, 9, somewhere in that range. And then the first case of glyphosate resistant Marystale was uh, uh, determined or confirmed in 2006. So basically we can say, yeah, about 10 years, about 10 years. And now the ball is rolling. We're getting one almost every year. The latest one is uh, common ragweed. Before that, we had giant ragweed. Before that, we had kochia. And then we have water hemp. So we have five weed species that develop resistance to glyphosate just in our state. We have about 12 or 13 uh, across the nation. Yeah. So surely we've, we, we know more about why we're developing resistance now, but is that making a difference in how we're controlling weeds? Uh, of course, it better start making difference because obviously I would say from 2000 till 2010, those were probably the best 10 years in terms of easiness and weed control. Those were the 10 easy years that I want everybody to hear this that all the producers and everybody that's been just going round up and round up, you had a very easy and simple 10 years of weed control. Well, now that program is slowly fading out because of these resistant weeds. So now it's the time to start doing something else out there. Start using soil applied herbicides, start rotating your modes of actions and basically rotating your tools of weed control. I know the Roundup still works in a lot of places, but what worries me is that I wanna save that Roundup for future generation. I don't wanna lose Roundup, it's a fantastic chemical. And the only way we're gonna save it is if we can uh, lesser the amount of that we use out there or go with some other products and there's plenty of other products that we can take care of these glyphosate resistant weeds. Does this mean then that weed control is going to be harder in the next 10 to 20 years? Yes, the weed control is gonna be quite a bit of more complicated in the next 10 years with the introduction of new herbicide tolerant crops. We we're talking about the camba beans coming on the market in the next few years, let's say, endless corn or soybean, which is 2,4-D resistant corn and soybeans uh, coming in, and then HPPD uh, soybeans coming in. Uh, we're gonna have all these new crops with all these traits in, and we're gonna use them, but they're not gonna be as simple to use as round up ready alone. We got to watch when we spray, how much we spray, and how often we spray. Some of these like uh, uh, HPPD chemistries, if you have too much of a, of a rate, uh, with the higher rates, you are going to have problems with the rotations in the following year. And then all these crops that just walk you through going to be a pro somewhat of a problem as a volunteer crops in your subsequent years. So therefore, you need to uh, start learning modes of actions, basically, you know, and this is actually uh, geared uh, from my standpoint towards young farmers. That's the most Get important your, thing right, for them? That's the most important thing for new young farmers across Midwest or United States is to start learning modes of action so that you know what kind of crop you're going to have out there and which product you can use because the modes of actions will tell you how these chemicals work, how they kill the weeds. So if you have, let's say, problems with uh, two or three herbicides that come from one group or one mode of action, you better use another 
mode of action. A different product name doesn't mean that it's a different mode of action. In many cases, it might be the same group of, of, uh, of mode of actions. And these are the things that we need to be teaching and promoting and the new generation of farmers better learn those things. Otherwise, you know, the weed control uh, can be pretty painful. Steven says farmers can look at information on herbicide classifications from TakeActionOnWeeds.com. The site is sponsored by the United Soybean Board and features a chart listing different chemicals with their modes and sites of actions. He says growers can also find state-specific information in the 2014 Guide for Weed Management in Nebraska. We'll link to both resources on the Market Journal website.